Okay. Okay, so once again, good day. So our topic for today is about uh, rewarding people. So people are rewarded through reward management process. Huh? So of course, uh, the rewarding process entails the, the creation, implementation, and maintenance of incentive systems aim at improving organizational team and individual performance. So it comprises both monetary and non-monetary incentives. Although the praise compensation is sometimes used in place of reward, it appears to indicate that work is an unpleasant necessity of which individual must be compensated rather than spending their time more profitably elsewhere. Okay, to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our first presenter. Good morning to everyone. I'm Diami Anfisil C. Villena, and I will report the continuation of Part 9 on the topic of rewarding people. The four topics were completed, reward management, job evaluation, market rate analysis, and grade and pay structures. So now, I will discuss the two topics, contingent pay and rewarding special groups. The two remaining topics will be discussed by my other group mate. So, let's start the discussion. First, I will discuss contingent pay. The topics covered are the basis of contingent pay, contingent pay as a motivator, alternatives to contingent pay, criteria for success, types of contingent pay, service-related pay, bonus schemes, team pay, organization-wide bonus schemes, and developing and implementing individual contingent pay. Now, I will discuss contingent pay. What is contingent pay? Contingent pay is used to describe any form of pay scheme that provides four payments on top of the pay three, which are linked to the performance, competency, contribution, or skill of people. Contingent pay can apply to individuals or teams, or it can operate on an organization-wide basis. It is either consolidated in the base rate so that pay progresses within a pay range or it is paid as a non-consolidated cash bonus. Contingent pay, also called incentive and variable pay, are arrangement where some or all of employees' earnings are dependent on some measure of performance. It may be determined by individual employees' performance in relation to their level of contribution to organizational performance or profit gain by the organization in which the employee works. Contingent pay is concerned with answering the two fundamental reward management questions, what do we value, what are we paid to pay for? Contingent pay schemes are based on measurements or assessments. This may be expressed as ratings that are converted by means of a formula to a payment. Alternatively, there may be no formal ratings and pay decisions are based on broad assessments rather than a formula. This topic analyzes contingent pay as a motivator and criteria for success. It then describes the different forms or types of contingent pay and how to choose and develop them. Ang contingent pay ay ibinibigay sa mga workers bilang rewards sa kanilang di matatawarang pagtatrabaho at makabuluhang kontribusyon para maging maunlad at progreso ang isang kompanya or organization. Now, I will discuss contingent pay as a motivator. The contingent reward system is a motivation-based system that is used to reward those that meet their identified goals. It provides positive reinforcement for a job well done. This reinforcement measurement encourages employees to effectively complete their tasks and meet their goals in a professional and timely fashion. Unlike annual performance reviews and evaluations, the contingent reward system provides more frequent assessments 
of the employee's work with applicable rewards when qualified. When considering contingent pay as a motivator, it is important to distinguish between financial incentives and rewards. Financial incentives are designed to provide direct motivation. They tell people how much money they will get in the future if they perform well. Do this and you will get that. The incentive is a motivational influence on a person that helps improve his performance. Thus, it can be said that all the measures taken by the management to improve the performance of its employees are incentives. The most commonly used financial incentives are pay and allowances, bonuses, and others. Financial rewards are act as indirect motivators because they provide a tangible means of recognizing achievements as long as people expect that what they do in the future will produce something worthwhile, as expectancy truly suggests. Rewards can be retrospective. You have achieved this, therefore, we will pay you that. But rewards can also be prospective. We will pay you more now because we believe you have achieved a level of competency that will produce high levels of performance in the future. These rewards are aligned with organizational goals. When an employee helps an organization in the achievement of its goals, a reward often follows. Ang contingent si pay ay isang motivasyon na kung saan mas gaganahan at mas lalong prosigido ang mga manggagawa upang magtrabaho ng tama para sa company. Dahil sa reward na ito, ay iisipin palagi ng mga employees na magko-contribute sila ng husto para sa ikakaunlad ng company na kung saan, dito rin kumukuha ang mga employees ng kanilang pang-araw-araw na pangangailangan. If contingent pay is perceived as a valuable reward that satisfies an important need, an employee's level of performance is essential for attaining that reward, employees may adopt behaviors that enhance their work effort in anticipation that their effort will improve performance and lead to that reward. Tama lang po na ang contingent pay ay ibinibigay sa mga employees na nag-aambag ng kanilang exemplary performance para sa company. Upang lahat ay mabibigyan ng contingent pay dahil sa kanilang high performance ay mas gaganahan ang mga ito sa pagtatrabaho. Here are some reasons in order of importance for using contingent pay. To recognize and reward better performance. To improve organizational performance. To focus attention on key results and values. To deliver a message about the importance of performance. To motivate people. To influence behavior. And to support cultural change. Dahil sa mga reasons na ito ay nare-recognize ang ambag ng bawat employees sa company. At bilang kapalit ng kanilang contribution ay ang pag-unlad ng company at kasabay nito ay nag-iingat din ang mga workers sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng rewards at incentives sa kanila. Alternatives to Contingent Pay the alternative to individual contingent pay is team pay. Pay related to organizational performance is another alternative. Although, some organizations have such schemes in addition to individual contingent pay. Bonuses may be paid in addition to or as an alternative to consolidated pay and individual bonuses can be combined with team or organizational bonus schemes. If the goal is to make contingent pay as an incentive, the criteria become even more strict. These are the following. Individuals should have a clear line of sight between what they do and what they will get for doing it 
as we can see in the model. Effort, to performance, to results, to measures, and to payment. This is the line of sight model. This expresses the essence of expectancy theory, that motivation only takes place when people expect that their effort and contribution will be rewarded. First, the reward should be clearly and closely linked to accomplish or effort. People know what they will get if they achieve defined and agreed targets or standards and can track their performance against them. Results or rewards are worth having. Fair and consistent means are available for measuring or assessing performance, competence, contribution, or skill. People must be able to influence their performance by changing their behavior and developing their competencies and skills. The reward is the payment or incentives should follow as closely as possible the accomplishment that generated it. So, pinapakita sa diagram na ang mga employees ay nagtatrabaho pagkatapos ay dinedetermine ang kanilang performance. Ano ang resulta ng kanilang performance? Paano minimeasure ang kanilang performance? At binibigyan ng mga karapat-dapat na employees ng rewards o incentives. Next, the types of contingent pay. Performance-related pay. Competency-related pay, contribution-related pay, and skill-based pay. First type is performance-related pay. Performance-related pay or PRP is a salary system whereby progression is linked to an employee's individual performance, usually measured against a set of pre-agreed objectives. Performance-related pay systems have been utilized across public and private sector institutions for some years. Operating performance-related pay methods vary greatly. I will discuss the features that are summarized and discussed in the figure. Agreed outcomes or the targets, two performance measures, two performance or the results achieved, the rating, the formula, and the performance pay. Pay increases are related to the achievement of agreed results defined as targets or outcomes. High levels of performance or achieve special achievements may be rewarded by cash bonuses that are not consolidated and have to be re-earned. Individuals may be eligible for such bonuses when they have reached the top of the pay bracket for their grade or when they are assessed as being fully competent having completely progressed along their learning curve. The rate and limits of progression through pay ranges or brackets are typically but not inevitably determined by performance ratings that are often made at the time of the performance management review but may be separately in a special pay review. A formula in the shape of a pay matrix is often used to decide on the size of increases. This indicates the percentage increase payable for different performance ratings according to the position of the individual space in the pay range. It is up to the organization to determine how they will compensate their employees based on their performance. Sa diagram na ito, pinapakita ang targets or goals ng company. Ano ang dapat gawin upang maatin ang targets? Ina-assess ang mga nagawang accomplishments. Pagkatapos ng assessment, ay magkakaroon ng rating. So, kinocompute ito based sa kanilang guidelines at pagkatapos ay ang pagbibigay ng performance pay. This is an example of how they will assess the performance base on the given criteria, rating, or formula. The PBB is still given to public employees in the public sector who displayed exemplary service. For example, DepEd personnel in best performance classification will receive a bonus worth 65% of their salary, 57.5% for better performance, and 50% for good performance. 
This is taken from Deped Order Number 53 S 2017. Second type is Competency Related Pay. Competency-based pay is the payment scheme that calculates employees' rewards depending on their experience, skills and knowledge, and not just job title. A competency-based pay system is the one that focuses on employees as individuals. Usually, it's more motivating for employees to work and develop their skills, be more aspirational, and apply gained knowledge and new skills in their work. The figure below depicts and describes the essential characteristic of competency-related pay. Agreed competency requirements, two competency-level definitions, two evidence of competency-level achieved, two rating or assessment, two methodology, and two competency pay. People receive financial rewards in the shape of increases to their pay base pay by reference to the level of competence they demonstrate in carrying out their roles. It is a method of paying people for the ability to perform now and in the future. The rate and limits of progression through the pay brackets can be based on the ratings of competency using a pay matrix, but they may be governed by more general assessment of competency development. It is up to the company to determine how they will assess the competency of their employees based on the rating and methods on how they will compensate them based on their competency. The third type of contingent pay is contribution-related pay. Contribution-related pay is a process for making pay decisions based on assessments of both the outcomes of the work carried out by individuals and the inputs in terms of levels of competency that have influenced these outcomes. In other words, it pays not only for what they do, but how they do it. Contribution-related pay focuses on what people in organizations are there to do that is to contribute by their skill and efforts to the achievement of the purpose of their organization or team. Paying for past performance and results, add paying for future success and competency equals to paying for contribution. Now, let's discuss the main feature, advantage and disadvantage, and when the contribution-related pay is appropriate to use. Main feature, the eight increases in pay or bonuses are related both to inputs and outputs. Advantage, rewards people not only for what they do, but how they do it. Disadvantage, as for both PRP and competence-related pay, it may be hard to measure contribution and it is difficult to manage well. When appropriate, when it is believed that a well-rounded approach covering both inputs and outputs is appropriate. The features of contribution pay are stated in this figure. Agreed outcomes, the targets, performance measures, performance and results achieved, and agreed competence requirements, two competence level definitions, two evidence of competence level achieved, two rating or assessment, two methodology, and two contribution pay. Contribution related pay rewards people for both their performance and their competency. Pay awards can be made as consolidated pay increases, but in some schemes, there is also scope for cash bonuses. Again, it depends on the company's rating and methods on how they will give or assess contribution pay to their employees. Dito po, ipinapakita ang mga targets at mga kailangang mga competencies upang magkaroon ng magandang performance at magkaroon ng pag-asenso ang isang company. So, ina-assess ang bawat performance at binibigyan ng kukulang gantimpala ang mga nagbigay ng magandang performance. The next type is skill-based pay. Skill-based pay provides employees with a direct link between their pay progression 
and the skills they have acquired and can use effectively. It focuses on what skills the business wants to pay for and what employees must do to demonstrate them. It is therefore a people-based rather than a job-based approach to pay. Rewards are related to the employee's ability to apply a wider range or higher level of skills to different jobs or tasks. The application. Skill-based pay was originally applied mainly to operatives in manufacturing firms, but this has been extended to technicians and workers in retailing, distribution, catering, and other service industries. We also have the main feature, the advantage and disadvantage, and when it is appropriate. The main feature, increments related to the acquisition of skills, advantage, it encourages and rewards the acquisition of skills, the disadvantage, can be expensive when people are paid for skills they don't use, when appropriate, mostly on the service industries. Skill-based systems are expensive to introduce and maintain. They require a considerable investment in skill analysis, training, and testing. I will also discuss the concept of service-related pay. Service-related pay provides fixed increments that are usually paid annually to people on the basis of continued service either in a job or a paid-in-pay spine structure. Increments may be withheld for unacceptable performance, and some structures have a merit bar that limits increments unless a defined level of merit has been achieved. This is traditional form of contingent pay, and it is still common in public and voluntary sectors and in education and the health service. I will also discuss the bonus scheme. Bonus schemes provide cash payments to employees that are related to the performance of themselves, their organization, or their team, or a combination of two or more of these. A defining characteristic of a bonus is that it is not consolidated into base pay. It has to be re-earned unlike increases arising from individual contingent pay schemes such as performance or contribution related pay or pay related to service which are consolidated. Such payments have been described as gifts that go on going on the grounds that a reward for say one year's performance is continued in subsequent years if the level of performance has not been sustained. Ang cash bonus ay binibigay bilang reward sa mga employees. So, ito ay binibigay maliban sa kanilang basic pay. Team-based pay provides rewards to teams or groups of employees carrying out similar and related work that is linked to the performance of the team. Performance may be measured in terms of outputs and the achievement of service delivery standards. The quality of the output and the opinion of customers about service levels are also often taken into account. This is also adapted by some companies, most especially in the food industry. The advantage of team pay are encourages effective team working and cooperative behavior, encourages multi-skilling, and provides an incentive for team collectively to improve performance and others. We also have the organization-wide bonus schemes. Organization-wide bonus schemes pay sums of money to employees that are related to company or plant-wide performance. They are designed to share the company's prosperity with its employees and thus to increase their commitment to its objectives and values. This scheme is also adopted on some business or corporations. The two main types of schemes are gain sharing and profit sharing. First, gain sharing is a formula-based company 
a refractory-wide bonus plan that provides for employees to share in the financial gains resulting from increases in added value or another measure of productivity. The link between their efforts and the payout can usefully be made explicit by involving them in analyzing results and in identifying areas for improvement. Second, profit sharing is the payment to eligible employees of sums in the form of cash or shares related to the profits of the business. The amount shared may be determined by a published or unpublished formula or entirely at the discretion of the management. Profit sharing differs from gain sharing in that the former is based on more than improved productivity. A number of factors outside the individual employees control contribute to profit while gain sharing aims to relate its payouts much more specifically to productivity and performance improvements within the control of employees. How to develop and implement contingent pay? Assess readiness, analyze culture, strategy, and existing processes, including the grade and pay structure, performance management, and methods of progressing pay or awarding cash bonuses. Decide which form of contingent pay is most appropriate. Set out aims that demonstrate how contribution pay will help to achieve the organization's strategic goals. Communicate aims to line managers and staff and involve them in the development of the scheme. Determine how the scheme will operate. Develop or improve performance management process covering the selection of performance measures, decision on competence requirements, methods of agreeing objectives, and the procedure for conducting joint reviews. Pilot test the scheme and amend as necessary. Provide training to all concerned and launch the scheme and evaluate its effectiveness after the first review. Now, let's discuss the second topic which is the rewarding of special groups. Rewarding and recognizing employees leads to greater employee engagement which increases retention and helps create a more positive overall workplace. Incorporating a rewards and recognition program helps increase employee engagement leading to many benefits for the company like increased productivity and retention. HR functions are transforming dynamically and rapidly. Today's employees, consisting mostly of millennials and Gen Z, want to be rewarded and appreciated for their contributions and efforts. For this reason, rewards and recognition solutions are becoming increasingly popular among organizations worldwide. We have different rewards for work. First, benefits, compensation, affiliation, work content, and the career. Special groups are as follows. Supervisors, corporate directors, top management executives, sales staff, contingent workers, and so on. They tend to be strategically important to a company. Positions tend to have built-in conflict that arises because different functions place incompatible demands on members of group. It depends on the company to decide how to reward special groups or employees. I will also discuss when to reward employees. First, good performance. If an employee consistently hits the mark, exceeds expectations, and proves themselves an asset to the organization, they should be recognized whether through performance bonuses, verbal recognition, or other rewards. Kung employees ay nagpakita ng maganda at mataas na performance, ay mabibigyan siya ng reward. Second, special achievements. Not to be confused with general good performance, a special achievement can be one-time event that deserves recognition. Halimbawa, kung ang isang sales agent ay nakapagbenta ng maraming produkto at siya ang may 
pinakamaraming napagbentahan at lampas pa sa kota, siya ay mabibigyan ng Special Achievement Award. Third, the holidays. The Christmas bonus or holiday bonus is one of the longest standing corporate traditions for expressing appreciation. These annual bonuses are a simple way of saying thank you for the hard work you've been contributed all year long. Even a small or modest holiday bonus can make a big impression. So, para maipakita rin ang appreciation para sa mga employee ay magbibigay ang company ng reward para sa kanila especially Christmas or New Year. Fourth, employee anniversaries. In today's corporate culture where job hopping has become the norm, an employee anniversary is a big deal. It demonstrates loyalty and commitment to the organization. The higher the anniversary, the bigger the deserved reward. So, para mas matubit ang mga employee upang magtrabaho ay mabibigyan sila ng reward every anniversary. Dahil dito, nag-expect ang mga employee na kapag anniversary, mabibigyan sila ng reward. Kung maaari ay kung mataas ang bilang ng anniversary ay mas mataas din ang deserve rewards nila para mapanatili ang kanilang loyalty. Now, I will discuss a sample reward management for sales representative or a summary of payment and incentive arrangement for sales staff. It depends on the type of company, the products or services it offers its customers and the nature of the sales process on how sales are organized and made. I will discuss the different methods that some businesses adapt to. Salary only, feature, straight salary, no commission or bonus, salary plus commission, the basic salary plus cash commission calculated as a percentage of sales volume or value, salary bonus, Basic salary plus cash bonus based on achieving and exceeding sales targets or quotas and meeting other selling objectives. Commission only. Only commission based on a percentage of sales volume or value is paid, there is no basic salary. And additional non-cash rewards, incentives, prices, recognition, and opportunities to grow. Additional discussion on paying manual workers. The pay of manual workers takes the form of time rates, also known as day rates, day work, flat rates, or hourly rates. Incentive payments by means of payment by result schemes may be made on top of a base rate. Time rates, this provides workers with a predetermined rate for the actual hours they work. Time rates on their own are most commonly used when it is thought that it is impossible or undesirable to use a payment by result scheme system, for example, in maintenance week. Time rates may take the form of what are often called high day rates. These are higher than the minimum time rate and may contain a consolidated bonus rate element. The underlying assumption is that higher base rates will encourage greater effort without the problems created when operating an incentive scheme. Payment by result schemes. PBR schemes provide incentives to workers by relating their pay or more usually part of their pay to the number of items they produce or the time taken to do a certain amount of work. The main types of PBR or incentive schemes for individuals are piece work, work measured schemes, measured day work, and performance-related pay. This is an example of time rate. The rate of the employee was based on a time-based rate. The example figure is 77.77 .77 per hour. There was also a different pay such as a holiday pay. The continuation of the report will be discussed by my other groupmate. Thank you for listening.